All right, in this video, we're gonna take a look at um, building a, a function um, that is uh, the taking a parent function, which we're going to be using x squared, and then applying some function notation to it, which is gonna go ahead and take a look like that, and coming up with a new function and, and renaming it, okay? So we're gonna do this piece by piece, and we're gonna start off with uh, something that we've been studying, um, just a, quadratic, which is going to be x squared. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start piece by piece, and I'm going to um, just do some notation off to the side and say that f of x equals x squared, okay? And we'll start from there. So if I'm going to take this given f of x equals x squared and apply this function notation to it, to get a new function, we're going to call that function g of x. We're going to do that piece by piece, and this is what we're going to um, just kind of like show you how to how to build that step by step. Okay, so the first thing that it tells us to do is that it says take the function and multiply it by two, and so this is what we're doing right here. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say, all right, well there's two, and I'm going to be writing this out here and I multiply that by two on both sides like that. And you can see that I'm going to, as kind of like a, a shortcut here, uh, put the two in front of the parentheses to form g of x. On this side over here, you notice that I'm, I'm putting two on both sides. I'm just kind of like doing whatever one side doing to the other, just like we typically would with um, any algebraic notations, okay? So um, when we move to the next part, which is going to be this x minus three, you notice that I am going to go, all right, well, this is two, and now I have f of x, and I'm gonna be subtracting three actually inside the function, which is going to be inside the function on the right hand side okay and that's why we would put a minus three inside of the x squared for the g of x which we're building right here okay again i'm showing you step by step right here and then i'm also showing you just a, a kind of like an easier way right here um, to knock it down, um, just showing you where all the pieces go so um, you could develop an under a quicker understanding of how to build these functions, okay? And then finally, we have this vertical shift of plus five. And to put this over here on this side, we're going to go minus three and then add five outside of that function notation, okay? And we're going to get two x minus three squared and then do a plus five on the outside and doing a plus five right here, okay? And so you can see that we have this part, okay? Just uh, looking at um, doing an observation here, okay? Is that this right here is the same as this guy right here. So we're gonna call that g of x and g of x is gonna be this new function that we made right here and right here. So to simplify everything down, what we're going to do is that we go g of x equals, okay, to x a plus minus. Right here is this going to give us a minus. Uh, so x minus 3 squared plus 5, okay? So to recap, what did we do? We took this function right here. We applied this function notation to it right here, and we formed a new function, g of x. Here we did it step by step, and this part right here is more or less just showing you how to build it step by step, a little bit of a, an easier um, way to go once you get a feel for it, okay? So this method's gonna work when you just have the parent function, okay, which is f of x equals x squared. This is gonna be a, a simple parent function. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna do a few examples um, down below and then uh, pause the video for you guys to try and uh, then check your work afterwards. So I'll see you there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do the first uh, couple uh, with you and then uh, just basically show you um, how to go ahead and um, do it using, again, if it just is a parent function that hasn't been transformed whatsoever, that is, is that no multipliers or vertical or horizontal shifts or anything like that, then you can just do kind of like this straightforward step. 
So first of all, uh, doing the first one right here is that it says take f of x, which is this guy, okay? And we want to put a one into a horizontal shift and four into a vertical shift. So actually one inside the function and a plus four outside the function. So to do that, we'd go g of x equals, and then we would have x squared, I'm sorry, x plus 1 squared, okay, because we're putting that plus 1 inside where the x squared is at, and then a plus 4 on the outside, okay? And so we're calling that g of x. Um, pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at another one. We have this guy, and this one actually has a multiplier in front of it, okay? And so we're going to have to put a negative 3 outside of when we do the horizontal shift we got a negative two in there so we've got x minus two squared and then a vertical shift of minus nine and so basically um that's how you do it again only when it is in this parent function and it hasn't been shifted transformed whatsoever okay so um go ahead and uh pause the video and uh give these a try and then i will post the answers right afterwards all right, so there we go. Um, these are the uh, the solutions, okay, uh, for these guys. So going through to check and see if you got them. Uh, make sure that you got the parentheses in the right places. And um, just in general, just watching your pluses and minus signs and all that other good stuff. And notice that this guy over here, when we put the A, B, and C in there, this uh, looks an awful lot like um, vertex form, right? And so, um, oops, uh, that's where the vertex form comes from, from the multipliers when A, B, and C just happen to be, they could be any number, right? So, all right, so um, let's take a look at now uh, this business of what happens if the function that we are going to um, be adding function notation to has already been transformed, okay? So there's going to be a little bit different ways to go about that, and I'll, I'll see you in that next part. All right, this next guy is not in parent form. Um, and so, as I had uh, mentioned previously, is that we're starting off with this, which I actually has been uh, multiplied and shifted around and whatnot, and we are applying this to it. And um, we're going to have to take a little bit of a different approach to that. So let me get set up real quick, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is that we need to multiply the entire function f of x that we start off with, which is this guy right here, by 2. And so this is how it changes, okay? So when I multiply the left-hand side, I'm going to get 2 times f of x equals, now watch, this is where a lot of students get tripped up, okay? So we have to multiply that 2 by the entire function. Okay, because the function already has stuff in it. So when we multiply, what we're going to do is that we're going to have to do like the distributive property right here and right here. And that's what we're doing on, um, if we look at this problem down below, is that we have to multiply in a 2 to this part right here and then the back part as well. Okay, and the reason being is because of the distributive property that we're doing right here. And so that's going to give us uh, 2 times a negative 4, which is going to give us a negative 8x plus 2 squared. 2 times 5 is 10. Okay, and that is the same thing that we're doing right here, which ends up giving us this guy. Okay, now... Okay, so now it is going to be business as usual um, for the shifting. So the shifting that we got to do is that we got to go a minus 3 and a plus 1. Um, and so that basically means is that when I write that all out, it's going to look like this. Okay, adding in the minus 3 and adding in the plus 1. Okay, and we do the same thing to this part right here is that we're going to add in the minus 3 and add in the plus 1. And so at the end of the day, when I start to clean everything up, um, I'm going to get the following. Okay, 
And so g of x is going to equal, bring down this part, the negative 8. And then I got x. So I got positive 2 minus 3, which is going to give me a negative 1 squared, and then plus 11. Okay. And you can see when I clean this part up as well, it is going to match that. And so a little bit different, um, most uh, you got to go ahead and um, just uh, keep an eye on what you're starting off with. If it looks like something that is clearly not in its uh, simplest parent form, then you know that you have to do some extra steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at another one and then I will um, go ahead and uh, let you pause the video and, uh, and try the, uh, the ones that come afterwards. Okay, so see you there. Okay. So here we go. Um, given this guy, what we're going to do is that we're going to apply this. Okay. So what we want to do is that let's go step by step. I think that's kind of like a two step process that works best. Is that if you have this two, okay, that is like adding a two and the two here from the last video. So we know that we're going to have to do the distributive property to both of those. So our next step is going to give us 2x plus 2 squared plus 10. Okay, And then we have this next part, which is we have our plus 4 and our plus 1. So the, if we want to do step by step, we'd have 2. Okay, x plus 2, and then we have the plus 4 squared, and then the plus 1 to the 10. Okay, that's coming from right there. And at the end of the day, when I put all this together, I'm going to get 2x plus 6 squared plus 11. Okay, so that's what g of x would look like. And again, you can kind of visualize it out after you do a few. So I challenge you to do the next two, which is right here, and then check your answers uh, versus mine. So go ahead, pause the video, uh, check them out, and then uh, see how you did. Okay, so there's the solutions. Um, and um, yeah, hopefully that you're getting the uh, the hang of it um, and, uh, and seeing how to uh, knock these things out. And so um, what we're going to go ahead and do is have to have a little bit more practice with these um, following up. And uh, yeah, well, uh, any questions that you may have, uh, go ahead and uh, bring them on into class. So uh, that's how you do that. And I will uh, see you in the next video.